Hi folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man, where we talk about real food and real results. This week, I'm here with one of my most powerful allies in the fitness world, Mr. Steve Cam, the raving lunatic behind Nerd Fitness. Among other things, we're going to talk about how to beat your personal bests, how to be smart about drinking booze, and why it's important to party. If you've listened to the past few episodes of Fat Burning Man, you know that I just released a new album of original music called Swamp Thing. Steve Cam was leading the epic after party in Nashville, and you'll hear all about it in this special episode of the show. Speaking of that, I have an announcement for you. A few months ago, a past guest of the show and band leader of the Tim McGraw band, Denny Hemmingson, and I hopped into the studio to record an album of original music. Our brand spanking new record is called Swamp Thing, and it's finally ready for you. That's right, long before I was Fat Burning Man, my past lifetimes have included being a touring singer, guitarist for several rock and funk groups, and even the tenor sax player for reggae, rap, and ska bands. To celebrate the launch of our new album, Swamp Thing, I'm giving away five signed hardback copies of my best-selling book, The Wild Diet, as well as autographed CDs to listeners of Fat Burning Man. All you have to do is go to your special listener link, fatburningman.com forward slash music. To sign up and win copies of my best-selling book and album, check out the music videos and get all the goods. That's fatburningman.com forward slash music. The musicians who join me in the studio are legends. Denny, our guitarist and producer, has been nominated for an Academy of Country Music Award for Steel Guitarist of the Year and has been the band leader of the Tim McGraw Band for nearly two decades. Our bassist, David Santos, has toured with Billy Joel, Elton John, John Fogarty, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Singing backup, the Grammy-nominated powerhouse, Wendy Moten, has recorded with Eric Clapton, Kenny Rogers, Alice Cooper, and Buddy Guy. So what are the rock stars of health and music saying about our new album? Jonathan Baylor, New York Times bestselling author and founder of Sane Solution, says, If you know anything about Abel James, you'll know that he has a deep love for his art and for those who join him on his artistic journeys. Abel's artistic prowess, originality, and love for life and his fans are audible in every note of Swamp Thing. Put it on repeat and enjoy. Derek Sivers, founder of CD Baby, says, I effing love it. This is my kind of funk. <laughs> you can find my new album, Swamp Thing, anywhere music is sold online, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, and more by typing in Abel James. But if you want all of the special bonuses I'm giving away, you have to visit a special link to get all the goods. Plus, if you buy my new album today, I'll even send you a free copy of my best selling ebook, The Musical Brain, and audio and video versions of my presentation on how to upgrade your brain with music. All you have to do is hop on your phone, tablet, or computer and type in fatburningman.com forward slash music. If you check it out today, you'll even get a listener discount and exclusive music videos from the studio. One last time, your special link is fatburningman.com forward slash music. All right, on to the show. Steve Cam is the creator and owner of nerdfitness.com, a fitness community dedicated to helping nerds, desk jockeys, and average Joes level up their lives. On this show with Steve, you'll learn how to have fun while still staying in shape, why it's important to party sometimes, how to be smart about drinking booze, how to shatter personal bests in the gym, and tons more. All right, let's go hang out with Steve. Hi, folks. This is Abel, and thank you so much for listening to Fat Burning Man. We're here this week with one of my good friends, Mr. Steve Cam. He's the guy behind the awesomeness behind, I should say, nerd fitness and so many other cool things. And we're going to be talking about a bunch of them, including nerd yoga. Um, and we had some pretty cool like personal experiences back in December, and you've made some pretty serious progress in the gym since then. We'll talk about that, too. But first off, how's it going, man? Hey, well, what's up, dude? Uh, you know, it's funny. I remember when we had first talked, I guess that was, geez, maybe over a year ago at this point. Yeah. Um, it was cool to connect with you. You seemed like a great guy, but we never actually connected in person. We we briefly connected at last year's South by Southwest, where like I ran into you and Allison briefly in the street, yeah. and and then like 
uh, whatever that was back in December, like, hey, I'm in Nashville for a few days. Uh, do you want to hang out? I'm like, when? You're like, like now. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, where are you? I'm like, I'm at a coffee shop. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's like <laughs> two blocks up the street from me. And I walked over. And we ended up having like the coolest night ever. I mean, oh I learned God. so much about you and, and your, at the time, fiance now bride so congratulations Thank you. Um, congratulations on that so you, always good to talk to good people about good people doing fun things and you are one of those people so it's, it's, totally. it's, it's, the honors also honors all on this side of the uh, mississippi at this point i guess because you're in, <laughs> yeah, in the other like half that. of the country <laughs> well, thanks buddy last so last time i saw steve i was at a crazy time it was my like impromptu month-long bachelor party slash recording time for the new record that we're coming out with with denny who's also in Nashville and uh, so we had one heck of a time we were going to go into the studio the next night after I met up with you and one of my buddies from Dartmouth uh, came into town one the best singer I know and I wanted him to be there in the studio and you got him so drunk <laughs> that he, he, he was vomiting on the way over oh, no. the next morning and I was just you know in vicious shape as usual but you, you know you, you, you rally with it and then like actually recorded which we weren't planning on doing um a, a few really awesome songs and we actually kept some of it but um that's amazing well yeah, jared in, in didn't my, i mean he was jared, yeah, he was uh, napping in the car well, hey we, too bad we weren't recording the night before because he, he he sang beautifully at the airbnb you had rented just down that's the street right. from me yeah so but in we my defense well yeah in my defense you did say hey i'm on a month-long bachelor party <laughs> and you are now the person in charge of this in nashville for the night so i'm like all right well what are he you was doing just nashville? collateral yeah. damage <laughs> but i i say this because uh i think a lot of people lose sight of how fun how much fun you can still have and be in good shape and be in good health and uh, it's something that like we certainly embrace not every night you know like you do that stuff all the time and it'll certainly catch up with you but every once in a while when you have the occasion especially during the holidays and stuff like that it's pretty cool to let loose and then remember what a hangover really feels like <laughs> you know the hangover i think is is all part of the part of the story as well mm -hmm. where you're like oh i remember why why i do that very rarely um <laughs> exactly. but yeah i, I you know, I think you can be very smart about it, whether it's drinking at a certain point or eating uh, certain foods. Like if you time them right and, you know, so like if I was going to go out and drinking, like I wouldn't be trying to set a PR in deadlifts the next morning. Right. You know, like, but I might try to crush a gym workout and then that afternoon eat poorly because I know most of those calories are then going to go to, uh, you know, building biceps. muscle. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> biceps. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think there's a time and place for everything. You have to remember to live too. So I think you're a perfect embodiment of the make sure you're having fun, you know, enjoy today, but plan for tomorrow too. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about what's happened since December. Uh, you mentioned briefly that you've hit some personal bests. How, how'd you go about that? Yeah, it's, uh, so actually about a year ago, well, I guess now it's about 15 months, uh, enlisted the help of a friend of mine who is also a personal trainer. He lives in Pittsburgh. His name is Anthony Michael, just super, super cool guy. Um, one of the people that I admire from a, from a, fitness training athletic perspective and I said hey man like uh, you know I've been doing my own programming for you know 10 years now 12 yeah. years I would love to have somebody else take a look at what I'm doing and program the things for me uh, which is funny because you know I program it for the the, the nerd fitness community and now mm -hmm. I have somebody else telling me what to do so uh, so I started working with him and I I, I kind of made it a personal mission to see like if I what can happen or how how strong and how fit can I get if I rededicate myself to to fitness so you know when you're running a business or you're traveling or you have family whatever it is fitness always seems to be that first thing to go yeah it's oh i don't have time or oh, i got stuck at work or oh, I'm, I'm working on this project that needs to get done or you're staying up late working on something and it just that's the first thing that gets kicked out so i made it a mission over the past 15 months to say like what if eating enough calories strength training um without fail and uh, and getting enough sleep like if those three things became non-negotiable mm -hmm. how do you get the rest you know can can you do that and how how fit can I get and can I still get everything else done so I, you know my first two months of doing that in the beginning of 2014 like I really struggled like I was showing up late to meetings with members of team nerd fitness and uh, you know, I was skipping things with friends articles were getting turned in late yeah and after about a month and a half of that I realized like I did have the time to both stay in shape and take care of all my obligations. 
I just needed to get my act together on the on the day to day <laughs> stuff. Like if you have to work out and you have to get you know seven to eight hours of sleep and eat enough, then all of a sudden you have to stop screwing around on you know messing around on the internet and mm-hmm. spending all this time on social media. Like I had to boil my day down to the bare essentials, and as a result of that, uh, I've like every week mostly every workout of every week I've hit a consistent personal best in any particular exercise so today I set two PRs I was doing uh, I did three sets of five pull-ups with 55 pounds hanging off of me wow and um three sets of six dips with 65 pounds hanging off of me and like mode that has been you know it started with three sets of five reps with no weight and then the next week it was like uh, a set of five and then a set of four and four with five pounds and then mm-hmm. seven and a half pounds and then 10 pounds. And that has been consistent for 15 months now. And I'm just I, like, I blew past all my old records and now every week it's just something new is happening. And I'm like, Oh man, I don't, I don't know where I can go with this. You know, I'm, let's, see, let's see what could happen after two years. You know, I think it's when in fitness, we all, we kind of think in terms of, you know, it's always like 90 days or 30 days. Like how ripped can I get, right. you know, following this 90 day program. And after, and you know, when you combine, you, we, we tend to think on that short scale and I did forever and I never made any true progress beyond like what, you know, was pretty good shape. And now I'm thinking in terms of like two, three, four years down the road, like uh, consistently at that point. And now I'm blown way past everything I used to do yeah. and having so much more fun with it. And getting enough time and also sleeping and eating right. Like who knew diet and exercise, right? It's, <laughs> it, it, it works, but I had to like remind, uh, you know, a guy that runs a fitness site, I had to remind myself of right. that. So that's where I am now. And it's so interesting because like when you take on a big project, like building a blog or a business or anything in between, uh, even if it's about health, like for me, writing a health book was like the worst thing for my health of all time, <laughs> you know, and a lot of people are just yep. like, well, it must be so easy because you work in health, but it's it's actually, <laughs> it's actually like some of the um, people who need the most health help work in health. And it's like a running joke. Like when I worked in consulting, the the joke was always, we need to hire ourselves because this this place <laughs> is a mess <laughs> because you're so busy helping everyone else, right? And I think like a lot of moms feel that too. You know, a lot of like families feel that. You help everyone else and all this other stuff so much, you really do need to remind yourself, oh, I got to I gotta sleep tonight. <laughs> I got to take care of myself. Yeah, well, because, you know, if you can take care of yourself, that makes it so much easier or it makes it easier, I think, for the other, for you to take care of, other people, especially like, yeah. you know, single moms, like trying to deal with three kids and, and they, those kids obviously have to come first and sleep has to come. Um, so like, where do you fit in time for yourself? But understand like even like five, 10 minutes here and there, one better healthy eating decision, like those things totally add up for, for it's better for you. It's better for the kids. You know, they're learning to eat healthier that sets them up on a better path. So yeah, I, I, when you, <laughs> I completely understand what you're saying. Like when you're working on a serious project and health, uh, can fall by the wayside, even if it's a health related product. I remember the first ebook we ever put out for nerd fitness, man. Like I probably drank like a case of monster. You know, this is like six <laughs> years ago. Like I just, I didn't have, I didn't have any money. I couldn't sleep. And I'm like, I, I'm, I remember it was like four in the morning and I'm writing this ebook and I have like, you know, two monsters and just trying to like tape my eyes open. I'm like, this is so <laughs> detrimental to my health. There's gotta be a better way. Like if I can get this out, you know, so I've, I've come a long way since then as far as like, dude, you have to take care of yourself too. If you're going to take care of everything, every other aspect of your life. So, <laughs> that, was, that was a rough one. <laughs> it sounds like you added things in and then got more time though. Like how does, how does that happen? I just, it, honestly, it was, I, you know, I had told my, let's say, for example, if I'm going to go to the gym, I would say at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., you know, I try to go on like a lunch break. Most of the time I would, and I need to write an article before I go to the gym. So I would wake up and I'd sit down on my computer and I'd hop on Facebook and Yahoo and check, you know, the news. And then I would go over to Twitter and make sure anybody hasn't messaged me. And then I would hop on the Nerd Fitness Facebook page and see if anybody is there to talk to. Yeah. And then I'd finally, you know, 10 or 10 minutes before 10 start working on an article and next thing I know I'm in the zone and I'm it's you know two in the afternoon I haven't gone to the gym yet it's like oh well now I have a meeting or a schedule or whatever like oh I just didn't have time to go to the gym today after about a month of doing that and understanding like well you can either skip the meeting and be a jerk to the person that's or you can go to the gym on time so you can still get to the meeting Mm -hmm. which means I need to be way more productive in the morning so like I would wake up I would sit down at my computer and the first thing I would do is turn on a program on my Mac called self-control which blocks like every website from um 
that any any time wasting website from so like I would hit like I got in this habit of hitting control or command T to open a new tab and mm-hmm. then quick F and the auto populates Facebook. Yeah. You know, and like you get in this <laughs> habit of doing these things and you realize like you're just you're you're completely wasting your time. So, you know, after you turn this program on, I hit control or tab, you know, command T F and it'd be like, this website is not available. Like, oh, is my internet? Uh, yeah, there we go. That was, should probably get back to work. So after like a week of that, uh, it got me back on schedule. And, you know, I, I remember hearing a quote or reading a quote somewhere. I think it was on, uh, I can't remember which website it was, but somebody was like, oh, I don't have the motivation to work on a business or I, don't, I would love to exercise more, but I don't have the motivation for it. And uh, the quote essentially was F motivation, cultivate discipline. Yeah. And I was like, I love that because so many people are like, oh, you're just more motivated than I am. Or you're just like, dude, I, I like essentially I put horse blinders on, yeah. you know, and, and handcuff myself to the desk because if I can then get all those things done in the proper amount of time they need to get done, it frees me up in the afternoon to, uh, to work on another project or, yeah. you know, over the past eight months I've uh, been learning to play the violin because that just cool. seemed like a fun thing to do. Yeah. So all of a sudden it's like, well, I now have to go to a violin lesson. I have to practice 20 minutes a day. The only way to be able to do that is if I get the rest of my obligations done as efficiently as possible. So it was like a, it was kind of like a, a slap in the face to once I made fitness a priority everything else had to become way more efficient too yeah. uh, unless I was going to start shirking my responsibilities or shirking my duties. And that's, you know, that's not an option. So yeah. if you need something done, ask a busy person to do it. <laughs> it's very true. It's Absolutely. hundred percent true. I was just um, down in Peru as we were talking about before this and getting all hippy dippy and reading like, you know, Taoist alchemical texts and stuff like that. And I found all these really rad quotes from way back because they knew all this stuff a long time ago it doesn't oh, matter yeah. how it's repackaged now on like blogs and stuff and on facebook or whatever and viral right, pictures Instagram and... photo with a sunset or a girl with a <laughs> yeah like but... why does how does why does that photo of her make me want to be more inspired i don't totally <laughs> but sure, i found huh? one that totally just like i don't think i would have gotten this five or ten years ago maybe but uh it hit me really hard now discipline is freedom and i was like oh yeah it totally is because it feels like the opposite of that, right? Like when you you feel like, like you said, shackle yourself to your desk or whatever. But what it really is, is giving yourself like a, like a solitary focus so that you can get into the zone. So that like when you are in the gym, you can be totally focused on that because you're not like skipping a meeting or like you didn't finish something earlier. You don't have to do this other awful thing later uh, one of my favorite books is eat that frog not even the book itself just the concept are you familiar with that you know? i'm not but I'm, I'm excited already i'm gonna yeah, write that, totally. eat that frog. Well, Tell me about it. it's about in the morning you do the biggest ugliest worst thing you eat that frog and then the rest of that you kind of ride that momentum i love it and just that concept That's... is so brilliant right like um You're afraid to do that one thing in the morning but if you just get it out of the way it's yeah. like oh, it's not... and, it, and it sets you up on such a great path for the rest of the day but we're so afraid to do that one thing that we pick the, t- the, the 10 tiny things that don't matter. And all of a sudden, it's like 8 o'clock at night. And you're like, oh, geez, I haven't done that thing yet. Uh, I might as well. And then all of a sudden, like you're hyper-focused because right. everybody else is in bed. They're off their computers. Uh, they're not on Gchat. Um, everybody, you know, it's dark outside. There's nothing to look at. So he's like, okay, now I can just focus. Like, why don't you set yourself up to focus at 8 a.m. And all of a sudden, by 11, like you're yeah. done. Like that's totally. just it. Then you're free to go surfing or play music or ha- take your kids, pick up your kids from school or whatever it may be. You know? Right. Yeah. It's totally cool. I've been very uh, defensive with my mornings, um, especially like because we've been with family a lot. We've been staying with people or with friends or whatever. But I'll just. Uh, usually get up before anyone else and then kind of like have that time in that dreamlike state. And I find that if I'm, if I've already spent a bunch of time just like kind of like uh, using too much of my own energy to get things done, you know what I mean when I say that? Then like going down and sitting and playing guitar, or writing a song or playing piano doesn't really come out of you anymore because you're just like, bleh. <laughs> right? You're beat up. Yeah. You're just emotionally, physically, mentally drained. Right. But if you do it like first thing in the morning or like second or third thing in the morning, you have your tea or your coffee. You kind of like ate that frog already. You did your like intense workout or, or whatever else. Um, and this, like these days I do Qigong in the morning followed by meditation. I've, I've kind of like cultivated this really cool thing that I look forward to most days, not every day, but most days. And then I'm kind of in this like dream lights, dream like state because no one's talked to me yet. Really? I haven't checked my email or my text messages or, or phone calls or anything like that. 
And so I'll just write, you know, and like writing something when you need to write it for a blog post or whatever kind of sucks when you're just kind of like forcing it out of you. But if you're just like, what am I thinking about today? Like what sounds interesting? And then you kind of like let it come out. That's how I learned how to write songs and kind of do that creative side of things. But I mean, I didn't even realize how much I was missing that until we basically like eight months ago said, screw it, we're going to Indonesia and like declared technological bankruptcy essentially and just didn't really come back, you know? Um, Cause you don't have to is the crazy part. It's like life the, still goes on. The people dust still settles there. and it other, still happens. Right. Yeah. Like people are still on Facebook, but like they talk to me on the phone or in person now, which is like oh, so this is awesome. a weird concept, right? Where like you, there's two people, but they're interacting without, <laughs> without a, a barrier between them. It's amazing. I don't know. It's this, it's this new fad. I don't know if it's going to stick around, but it's pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm personally a fan of it. But I mean, even just meeting you in person, cause we had like multiple online or like various almost interactions but just spending a few quality hours together is i mean it makes a whole relationship or rekindles one or it's it's a beautiful thing and i I hope that people can learn from from that right especially in the online work world because it's a double-edged sword this is where we communicate with people but we're telling to we're telling people to kick themselves off at the same time. But, but I, hey, I mean, we we met here, but then we hung out. In, right. So, like, I think if you can meet somebody in real life, it then also further strengthens the any other future online interaction True. you might have yeah. with that person. So it puts a name, a face, a personality with the words from their email. Or, you know, if I got a tweet from you or, you know, the fact that we're just talking on Skype right now, like, I feel like I know you a million times better because right. we spent – two hours together you know if we actually we spent a whole night together in nashville but yeah. you know had we only spent an hour night. in nashville it was a oh man i, I think we ended at a uh, honky tonk central downtown <laughs> at about three in the morning that was a, that was a <laughs> with jared that was a chugging one. a budweiser or something <laughs> God, anyway but so you fun. you're great at getting uh not only people organized online but then in person again you just did uh yoga so let's talk about that yeah well so it's you know, nerd fitness has has. We're in the process of kind of transitioning. So it started with just me and a blog. You know, it's just like I'm just going to write articles and help people. Yeah. Uh, and and then it and then this community popped up around it, and we had this you know this message board community that has uh, become something far bigger and greater than I've ever could expect. It's like 40 or 50 volunteer moderators. They organize wow. meetups. They've organized meetups with each other. Like cool. there are, you know, I, I know of like multiple relationships that have popped up out of the nerd fitness community. People like <laughs> moving cross country to live with each other. Wow. Uh, and uh, I, I knew there was something, something pretty cool there. And, you know, last year we had our very first, um, camp nerd fitness, which is where we brought everybody together to an actual location and we're getting ready to hopefully in the next week or two, a few weeks anyway, um, sell out Camp Nerd Fitness for 2015. But so we're in the process of trying to identify some other cool products and things that people in our community are like, dude, like we need, you know, we, this is what we want and this is what we're leaning towards. So I've always been a big fan of strength training, but I know like on the other side of that coin is flexibility and mobility. And especially for somebody that is like really, you know, if, if they're very self-conscious about going to a gym or if they start out at, at, a, at a heavier weight than they're proud of, um, getting them to go into a gym or going for a run or even um, doing basic bodyweight exercises might be a challenge. Uh, and if that's the case, then like we recommend people start with, you know, basic mobility and, and, um, and flexibility. So we're building out this cool character system through Nerd Fitness where like if you imagine World of Warcraft, so like you buy the World of Warcraft, and then there are expansion packs that, you know, are, are additional courses or additional they open up new continents and new mm-hmm. quests and new pieces of armor. And there's this really cool thunderstorm happening outside my window right now, by the way. Nice. Um, <laughs> so if you hear it like thunder, that's, that's what's happening. Um, so we're in the pro- so we just filmed uh, a few weeks back. We went to uh, Ohio and um, brought in a great friend of ours. Her name is Kate Merrill. Uh, she came. She was our yoga instructor at Camp Nerd Fitness last year. She's going to cool. be. Um, back at camp again this year and for about three four days uh, you know she led myself and then another team member on our team uh, Stacy from nerd fitness and the three of us uh, put together you know filmed for for a number of days put together beginner intermediate and advanced uh, yoga workouts built you know that are really grounded in solid yoga philosophies but it's done in like a cool like the studio like we, we had like fluffy clouds and a giant nerd fitness logo so it looked like a super mario level uh, <laughs> But we're teaching people yoga. So we think it's like this perfect kind of complement 
to the strength training portion of nerd fitness mm-hmm. where it's like if you're strength training on monday wednesday and friday what do you do on tuesdays and thursdays like well you know here's here's yoga or, or it's like hey i just want to be more flexible and i want to be able to touch my toes yeah. um we think this is going to be a cool opportunity for that so it's it's the first step of something we've tried in a while it's like we haven't put out a, a new course or product or anything on nerd fitness you know we had camp we had the academy which we first put out back in beginning of 2014 so this is like the first new thing we've put out in in a long time so i'm very excited for it um the the film crew we worked with was awesome the kate was fantastic cool uh, it was fun to do some of these movements i'm like how do i you know so like i got to be like that person that had to scale certain movements to mm-hmm. show people like hey if you can't do this here is an opportunity to yeah. still still get through it so it'll be a video that you can follow along with at home um you can put on your iphone or you know listen to it and do it when you're at the gym um nice. but you know we just walk people through you know 20 30 minute videos there'll be a whole bunch of them that come with it uh and yeah, I'm super excited. Like when we put this out, eventually it's gonna have you know when we get to the, a cool spot with it. You know, hopefully we'll have some additional quests and missions and things like that that all tie into your uh, nerd fitness character that allow your character to to level up as, as you're leveling up. So get the nerdy so part cool. in it too. <laughs> so I've always I've I've been inclined to weight training and strength training because it's like easy. For my body type, I'm a stonemason's son and just grew up like <laughs> carrying rocks up and down ladders and stuff. But uh, in August, I broke my foot and that was terrible. And it got me really into the other side of things. And it's like you, you it's easy to overlook your weaknesses, right? And one of mine was definitely mobility and flexibility. I think for dudes, it's hard for us to, you know, think of ourselves as putting our like feet up behind our head and stuff. Like right. It just doesn't. There's but not what's, as what's much cool appeal. About that? <laughs> yeah. We don't want to have huge biceps or something. It's not super as primal like as picking up something four hundred pounds, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but if if I can just personally attest to the power of that, I mean, I when I started. Um, obviously I couldn't do too much with my foot because it was broken, but I slowly like leveled up, focused on like opening the joints, uh, big fan of Chi running Danny Dreyer. I've had him on the show a few times and he's all about bringing like Tai Chi and balance to any movement. doesn't matter if it's walking or running, sprinting, hiking, whatever. Um, but just kind of starting small with Qigong and yoga and then kind of like leveling up, like you said, with the holes, you know, starting out at like 15 seconds or 20 seconds with one of those you know crazy things that you didn't think you'd be able to do putting your arms and legs out at the same time and balancing everything then slowly moving it up and it's so cool because like breaking my foot was one of the best things that's ever happened to my you know mobility physicality and even eventually strength um because yeah, now it comes from a stronger foundation that. yeah it's so cool <laughs> Well, it made, it made you, and I think we talked about this in when we were hanging out in Nashville, but like you breaking your foot is kind of like the, you know, I found out two years ago that my, two of my vertebrae didn't line up and I was mm-hmm. like, uh, uh-oh, like that's, that, that's not good. And I right. like, I, I equated it to like my Tony Stark moment. And I think, you know, for you breaking your foot, like all of a sudden Tony Stark has all the shrapnel in his chest and he has to keep right. this, you know, his arc reactor to keep him from, from dying. <laughs> so he had to completely re-engineer his entire life around this, you know, this, this thing that, that he initially felt was a limitation right. then became the reason why, you know, he became Iron Man as a result of this thing that had happened to him. Yeah. So, um, you know, for you breaking your foot, for me finding out my vertebrae didn't line up, uh, you have to go back to basics. You have to simplify. You have to make sure you're practicing proper form. Uh, you have to understand how important that balance is. So, like, if you just do strength training, you know, and you see the people that are like, they, they do just biceps and bench press, and like they're always hunched over like right. this, you know, mixing in some flexibility and tra- like is going to make you such such a better power lifter too is you know opens up those muscles to um, to help them rebuild it helps you stay safe because you're not hunched up over in terrible form uh, i think it's a perfect complement to to strength training and i think it's it's for for overactive nerds that spend all of their time on their computers and phones yoga is a really great mental test yeah. too to like this is going to be 20 minutes and you're not going to look at your phone right. you can't <laughs> check your phone between so like if you're at the gym 
powerlifting, like you're still probably, you know, a lot of probably still checking your phone in between right. sets and whatever. Yoga is like, leave your phone in the other room, yeah. to put it on silent, whatever it is. And, you know, it's almost like a guided meditation, but you are also improving the, you know, the, the health of, of your body at the same time. So I think it's a, it's, it's a great mental challenge and a physical challenge in a completely different way from, from, from powerlifting. Yeah. I, one other cool thing that's happened as, I don't know if it was crossing the 30 mark or something like that, but I started to really reevaluate why I was doing all this stuff. And I, I like what you said earlier about like five years in the future. I'm like, I'm not doing this for me now. I'm not doing this to have, you know, a, a crazy good looking ripped body or something like that in the present or for s- swimsuit season. I Spring want Spring breaks coming up. Gotta get ripped <laughs> in. <laughs> right. But it's really about like, I, I'm much more focused now on just, You know, especially reading all those hippy dippy Dallas things like how do you live a longer time and look like you're 30, but be 60 or whatever, because you meet some of those people, especially when you travel to I know you went to Peru and that's where we just were. And you you meet these people who are like they look like they're the same age as you, but they're 70. And you're like, what in the world is this person doing? (laughs) Because because they're definitely not going to gyms, you know. (laughs) Yeah, right. <laughs> but they're doing something that that certain people are doing at gyms. You look at people like Mark Sisson or or more modern uh, Western examples of, of success. And I'm, I'm trying to kind of like connect those two things, like the the totally outdoors and nature side, living in the mountains at 12,000 feet or whatever, or living in Malibu like Mark and <laughs> trying to figure out how we can all kind of age well, I guess. Right. Yeah. So how do you do that? What's your, what's your like? What's your why? Oh man, well it's, it's it's so I can stay out till three in the morning drinking Jack Daniels with, uh, <laughs> when it, when Abel comes when Abel comes to town. No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, I I, I can't. Uh, I'm totally gonna butcher it, and I can't. I'm not even sure if I have the right Greek philosopher right. But I think it's it was like Aristotle's <laughs> like, what a shame it is. What a shame it is for man to have lived and not have seen his full potential or something, you know, sure. live uh, the potential to live up to your, the opportunity to live up to his full potential, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, he's currently rotating in his grave. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I just feel like I have an obligation to myself. Really. It's like, what am I actually capable of? Like what, you know, from a business perspective, from a, from a building a community perspective, from a physical perspective, like, where is my ceiling? And if I, you know, I, I don't know what that is, but yeah. I'm excited to, to work to, to bust my ass and, and find out if I can get closer to it. Um, and I know all those things tie together. So, you know, every fitness or I'm sorry, every, every really successful person that I, that I respect in the business world, uh, is also in great shape. Mm. Um, you know, Richard, somebody asked Richard Branson, is like, what, you know, if you had to tell an entrepreneur one thing, or what would that one thing be in order to be most successful? He said, he said, work out, Yeah. you know, and, and I think there's just this, this part of us that is meant to move, that is meant to be strong, that is meant to do these things. Um, and that carries over to us in a business perspective, um, with our friends, with our family, whatever it may be. So, uh, when I'm thinking five years down the road, it's just like, I, I want to see what I can do. Yeah. And for me right now, it's strength training because, you know, I said my, my I, I never thought I'd be able to deadlift or squat again um, when I found out about my spine. And then I was just yeah. kind of like, I don't, you know, I'm not going to let this limit me. Uh, and now the goal is to, you know, hit 405 on a deadlift and hopefully get up to get up to 500 nice. and, and, and see if I can make that happen. And if I can, great. If not, then like, okay, like I, I gave it a shot and I don't have to worry about Oh, yeah. that's not possible, you know, or, or I have to worry about like, I wonder what would have happened had I, had I made this um, yeah. a priority. So I don't know. I just feel an obligation to, to myself, to my, to the community at nerd fitness to, um, to do these things. And all like, I just love it. Like I love yeah. the idea of walking into a gym or going outside to train or whatever it is and just seeing if I can be a little bit better than the day before. Like that, um, that really gets me going. And I, I know you said earlier that the concept of flow, like getting into, getting into the zone, like when it comes to your writing it happens to me in writing. It also happens to me in the gym too, where yeah. like I have a great song on and like, you know, I'm rubbing chalk on my hands, get ready to jump up on the, jump up on mm-hmm. the rings. And like, I'm the only person in the gym, even though there's, you know, 150 people there. Um, I feel like I get, I can get in that zone. So it's kind of a cool, it's a cool thing that I try to make sure I get a chance to do. Yeah. Um, as often as possible, both with writing and then, and then with fitness. And I think they're both 
weirdly enough, like deadlifting and typing. Are somehow similar connected. in a lot of ways. Well, because you get so much like cool momentum. I know if I, if I wrote something great in the morning, then I'm going to crush my workout because I'm like, I'm stoked. I'm riding that wave or whatever. And doesn't it just make it so much easier if, if you like have already deadlifted hundreds of pounds that day, then like doing something else that seems hard to everyone else isn't anymore. You're the guy you know just I mean? writing an article. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just picked but, up half of the car. This but if you nothing. don't, if you don't go to the gym and you promise yourself yourself that you would, or if, or if you promise the, the vice versa that you were going to write something and, and you don't, um, yeah. it's almost the neg. You get the opposite effect, right? You get pulled down. You almost can't do anything, and you get all this like congestion in your day, yeah. almost. And then you're on Absolutely. Facebook to try to distract yourself and get, get right away doing from the unimportant. It's like, oh, I got to respond to these comments or hopping on Twitter or answering you know emails that are not worth your time and yeah I completely agree so like a great workout so, you know like I so I try to crush a you know I wake up uh put on a great playlist I got a cup of coffee black or you know or um you know your mate tea and just sit there and hopefully get in the flow and crush an article for a few hours and then and then I'll go to the gym and if I'm super energized from the article the the, the gym the exercise or the gym uh workout seems yeah. like it's it's you know, like I'm just kind of powering through it, even though it's all things that I've never been able to do up until that point in my existence. Uh, and then that in turn carries back over to my afternoons where it's like, all right, dude, like I'm just firing all cylinders. And when you can do that and have, you know, go, you know, I like to say, if you can wake up excited and go to bed proud, like yeah. that's a pretty that. good day. That's cool. You know, it's yeah. a good day. And, and there, you know, tomorrow's no guarantee. And that's, that's such a cliche, but you know, so you try to do things where it's like you you made it, you had a good day, you learned something, you pushed yourself to a limit that uh, or past a limit that you weren't didn't think you could reach, and um, and you get to spend some good time or quality time with people, be it your family or your friends or doing something that you love, whether it's music, or you know playing video games or reading a book. Like if you can tr- if you can find a way to fit those things into your day, um, and do that on a regular basis, like you're gonna live a pretty damn good life, I think. Yeah, totally. So I have one last thing for you um, that I wasn't even planning on asking, but having done so much Bring traveling on, recently, I, I'm I'm curious as to what you'd say if you could distill like all of your crazy adventures and travels into a piece of advice for someone who hasn't really gotten out of the West or America that much. What would you say uh-huh. to them? Um, that's a good one. Um, don't listen to the news. It's not. It is. It is infinitely more fun and infinitely less scary than you've been led to believe. Um, whether you're going to like, I remember before I went to Peru, yeah. like, oh my god, it's a third world country. You know, that was the first time I'd ever been outside of North America. Yeah. And uh, I had the. T- I met the nicest people. I never felt. I never felt unsafe. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to. You know, I, I remember I was in Thailand and Cambodia for a little while. And I come home and people are like, oh my God, like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. They're like, well, there was like a, a, a you know, border bat, a border battle between those two while you were there. And like, there was something else happened. It's like, oh, didn't even notice. You know, like, there were, <laughs> I was eating noodles there were normal, at the beach. There were normal people in every country that yeah. are helpful, that want to help people. Um, there are great experiences you cannot have here in the States. And, you know, I think um, Tim Ferriss coined the term geo arbitrage, but. Mm. You know, people are like, oh, I can't, you know, I'd love to travel, but I can't afford it or I can't whatever. Like once you get your mind past the idea of like a vacation doesn't have to be you know, the Sandals Resort with, you right. know, and you're like a hotel on, on a beach and people bringing you pina coladas, like Yuck. staying in hostels or Airbnb using airline points to travel and eating like, you know, from street vendors or small restaurants off the outside the touristy part of town. Like mm-hmm. you can travel cheaper than living here in the states probably yeah. um it's probably safer and your money goes so much farther and you're gonna end up with so many great stories um you know i recently got a chance to give the best man speech at at, at um my best friend cash's wedding since first grade he actually came cool. with me to he actually came with me to uh, Peru. He was the first. Nice. He convinced me to go to Peru. So, like, he was the guy that convinced me to start these crazy trips. Wow! And then, and then met up with me along the way. Um, you know, and I, I remember saying, I was like, you don't get to pick how long we're here on the planet. Like, who knows? Like I said, tomorrow's no guarantee you get hit by a bus. But it all comes down to who you spend your time with and the types of stories you get to make with those people. Yeah. 
And the cool stories you get to have, like I guarantee the two weeks that you just spent in Peru, like you probably have stories that you're, you and you and Allison are going to look back on uh, years and years from now. You're going to tell your kids, your grandkids, and be like, that one time that we went to Peru and that crazy thing happened. Right. Like you are <laughs> never going to forget that. And that is, you know, those things are so much more valuable than like a bigger TV or a nicer car or whatever right. it may be. Like, get out there. You know, you can travel with kids. You can travel if you're 60 and divorced. You can travel if you're 20 and just out of college. Like, there are people your age in your situation doing it right now. And, to, you know, to, it, it, the sooner you can get out there, the sooner you can learn and realize, like, the things that we complain about here in the States are so irrelevant yeah. and um, the people that you can meet are so nice and the things that you hear about on news on the news are, you know, so blown out of proportion uh, and, and ridiculous. You know, like you're probably safer in those countries than you might be uh, <laughs> in your particular town, just especially if it, depending on what part of the, what part of the United States you live in right yeah. now, like it, it might not be that way. So get out there, pick a country, Put ten bucks in a piggy bank right now. Put an X on a map, uh, X on a map, and an X on a calendar. Be it nine months, two years from now, whatever it is. But make it real. Pick a place. Start putting money aside and 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 go. Yeah, that's that's the best advice I have for people. Doesn't it? It's so amazing too, because like every time we come back, we're like, because two weeks kind of sounds like a long amount of time to be away, but like if you're at home, it's just like boop goes right by, right? And every time we go somewhere, we feel like we're time traveling. You know, like the amount of experience that's built into like where you went, how you got there, who you met, the like alpaca that that tried to trample you or that you ate later or whatever is like the, the sheer amount of experience that you get is is earth shattering. And it's it's so beautiful. And um, since last it's been almost a year that we've been traveling like this and like the person, the people that we were back then are not even close to the people that we are now. Um, sure. And, and it's just like the maturity that you get, the the ability to go throughout almost any experience and still love it is something that I, I think, you know, I see eye to eye with you on that because that's how you live your life too. It just opens yourself up to all of these new possibilities. And I think you're just like an awesome example of that for people. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's it's funny. You mentioned the time travel thing. Like, that's a great way to put it. It's almost like Interstellar. Yeah. You know, like the movie Interstellar where, like, uh, you go out and you have five years of experience and it happens in, over the span of two weeks. Yeah, and you exactly. come home and you're like, what happened? Like, what, you know, who in the world did <laughs> yeah, Nothing like, happened. You've been gone for two. What happened? It's like you learn so much about yourself. The even like the simple thing of like trying to find a bus in a foreign country, like right. becomes an event becomes an adventure. Yeah. And when you don't have that adventure pre-planned and you don't have, uh, you're not spending your week, you know, getting drunk on a beach. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's always a time and place for that too. Um, <laughs> but like when you have, when, when you set out and purposely focus on adventure, um, you know, so those, those crazy things happen. And then when you come home, you're like, dude, there was this one time where I had no money. Uh, the ATM was broken. I was in a foreign country. Uh, I didn't know where my hostel was. It was pouring rain, and uh, my cell phone was dead. And I found a place to sleep. I figured it out. Like yeah. you get put in these situations. You're like, when you come home, it's like, oh, I sat in five minutes of traffic today. It's right. like, that's that's not that bad. Or something crazy happens at work, and you can just be like, dude, it's okay. Like yeah. you you get this such strong sense of self reliance and like. I got this, you know, mm -hmm. that it translates to so many other parts of, of your life. So when you're not in those crazy situations, you're back in the creature comforts of, of the U.S., those small things don't bother you nearly as much. And that's funny. Like, I've noticed when I those things do start to bother me again, I'm like, all right, I got to get out of here. You got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I got to get out of here. I got to go do something or go somewhere crazy and do something ridiculous. Make so, life hard for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I may remind yourself that it's like, dude, life is meant to be lived, you know, and adventure is... You know, those stories are are what you will have when you're 80. It's not the it's mm -hmm. not the TV or the car or the whatever it may be. So the flying car by then. The fly <laughs> <laughs> right, the flying car. Exactly. Hopefully, I mean, come on. Yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. Right. Yeah, hoverboards, hoverboards, self lacing Nikes, and flying DeLoreans. Right. <laughs> Still waiting on that. Well, his name is Steve Cam. He runs Nerd Fitness. What's the best place for people to find you, Steve? Hit me up on Twitter. Man, I love Twitter, although no, it's not in the morning because in the morning I'm <laughs> writing and exercising. But in the afternoons, Steve Kim, S-T-E-V-E-K-A-M-B. Beautiful. 
Steve, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, and man. We'll see you in Nashville in just a few weeks. I'll see you in Nashville. I'll, uh, I'll get the guitar and guitar tuned and uh, the music instruments ready, and we'll have yes. the jam out. Awesome. I'll bring Jared Great. so we can make him drunk again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll chat soon, man. Thanks again. All right. Sounds good. Before you go, I have something special for you here today. Do you need kick butt music for your next party? Do you want to impress your friends with shameless jams from the coolest band they've never heard of? Do you want to win a free copy of my new book? I've got great news. My new album of original music, Swamp Thing, is finally ready for you. To celebrate the launch of my new album, I'm giving away five signed hardback copies of my best-selling book, The Wild Diet, and autographed copies of my new CD. That's right. Before I was known as my shirtless alter ego, fat-burning man, my past lifetimes have included being a touring singer, guitarist for several rock and funk groups, and even the tenor sax player for reggae, rap, and ska bands. The musicians who join me in the studio for this project are legends. Denny, our guitarist and producer, has been nominated for an Academy of Country Music Award for Steel Guitarist of the Year and has been the band leader for the Tim McGraw Band for nearly two decades. Our bassist, David Santos, has toured with Billy Joel, Elton John, John Fogarty, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Singing back up, the Grammy-nominated powerhouse Wendy Moten has recorded with Eric Clapton, Kenny Rogers, Alice Cooper, and Buddy Guy. You can find my new album, Swamp Thing, anywhere music is sold online. iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Spotify, and more just by searching for Abel James. But if you want to support this free show, get all the music videos and audio bonuses and enter to win our giveaway of signed copies of my best-selling book, The Wild Diet, make sure you go to your special listener link at fatburningman.com forward slash music to get all the goods. One last time, your special listener link from any device is fatburningman.com forward slash music. As always, when you purchase anything from me, your support helps bring this free show to you every single week. All right, here's a special track from my new album, Swamp Thing, for you to listen to before you go. I hope you enjoy it. Drop me a line anytime, and I'll chat with you soon. Cheers. me down with complication Heavy troubles I can't carry very far So I set my worries down and find salvation At that old back door back street smoky bar Well I just need some sanctuary when that cold, cruel world has knocked me to my knee Then you'll know just where you'll find me I'll be right here singing songs of sweet relief And I thank God for the blues To heal my soul and set me Sing it with me if your heart's been blue. Thank God for the blue. So I flip the lash on that dusty, musty case. Raise that ragged lid and smell the air. Slide my fingers up those trusty, rusty strings. Let that old guitar cry my tears And I thank God for the blues Heal my soul and set me free Now sing it with me if your heart's been proved Thank God for the blues
Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? Please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you. And if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at Fat Burn Man and Facebook by typing in Abel James or Fat Burning Man. Drop me a line anytime. Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. I'll give you a second to type it in, fatburningman.com. And you'll get all the show notes and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man. Better yet, enter your best email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week. for me to focus on my health and realize that the alternative health and healing your body with real food and common sense.